today is a good day. We are going to be diving into the history of the Dodge Brothers, and we're going to be taking a nice little look at this 1921 Dodge. sports cars, imports, weird little German bubble cars. If you like automobiles and you enjoy automobile history, then you really should press subscribe. That'd be nice. And hit the bell icon. That way you can be notified when I post another annoying video for you. All right. Now let's go ahead and talk about those wild and crazy Dodge Brothers, okay? Because they were pretty wild. They actually had a reputation in the Detroit bar scene for being hard to handle. Okay, but we'll get to that in a second. Let's first start with their childhood. Now, they grew up working in their father's foundry shop. So they started working with their hands at a very young age. You had John Dodge, okay? And he was the managerial type. He was the guy that was keeping things on time and in line. And then you had Horace. Now, Horace was the mechanical tinker, okay? He was fixing things, creating things, inventing things. And in fact, it was one of Horace's first patents, a dirt-free ball bearing, that brought a big chunk of change to the Dodge Brothers. And then with that chunk of change, they would take that and they'd start producing bicycles. Then they would move into quality automobile parts, then transmissions, and then eventually one of the top automobiles available. that was a very short-term thing but they would they bought the bike company they sold the bike company they kept that cash they became a supplier of parts and they were pretty much like the day Dion, the european day Dion, which is a company that you can early vehicles you can find one day Dion part and just about all of them okay and then in 1902 the brothers would land a deal with ransom olds okay founder of the old motor vehicle company which would later be known as oldsmobile okay that contract would be very profitable they would be making very high quality transmissions for old motor vehicle company now let's dive into the time period where dodge was with ford okay now the boys at this point the boys had plenty of money. They were very wealthy. They were still getting into bar fights though, but uh, yeah, so they had some money to play around. And it was also at this point that Ford had probably gone bankrupt a couple of times. Uh, honestly, Henry Ford was a little bit kooky, okay? And he wasn't what you'd call, he could build the cars, but he really couldn't market his cars. And the Dodge brothers saw a bit of an opportunity there, okay? So they worked out a decent deal that allowed them to have like 10% of Dodge Motor Corporation, uh, Motor Company. And then, and things were actually working out pretty good with the Dodge brothers and Ford working together, even though all of them kind of hated each other, except for the Dodge brothers, obviously they loved each other. They were pretty much inseparable. But Ford hated them. Uh, Dodge didn't really respect, the Dodge brothers didn't really respect Ford because he was kind of a jerk and he wasn't really interested in any kind of development 
or improvement for his automobile. Oddly enough, old Kooky Ford hated the Dodge Brothers because they had red hair of all things. Eventually, after the Dodge Brothers could not convince Henry Ford to continue developing and improving his automobiles, and after Henry Ford had like somehow squeezed out one of his main business partners, the Dodge Brothers decided they wanted to get out. In 1913, the Dodge Brothers made out like bandits, all right? With, uh, with all of their earnings, with their dividends, and with that 10% of Ford that they owned, okay? They left there with almost $35 million. Ah! In fact, around the time that they split with Ford, they were the largest parts manufacturer in Detroit. <laughs> accepted into the high society of Detroit and uh, really who gives a shit right but their wives did okay and so great way to get involved great way to get approval amongst snobs is money so at one point I think it was John he decides to be the main benefactor for the Detroit Symphony Orchestra and with that he gains acceptance and then, <laughs> that quickly gets ruined when him and a buddy decide to jump and beat up a lawyer outside a Detroit bar. <laughs> Actually, it was Horace that built some kind of a major hall for the Detroit Symphony Orchestra. Take that back. But, it was this kind of wild mayhem that was getting the Dodge Brothers in trouble. And they genuinely had a reputation amongst all the Detroit saloons for being belligerent and super hard to handle. <laughs> the Dodge Brothers would shoot out their first complete automobile in 1914. And then within two years, they were the second most selling automobile within the United States. The Dodge Brothers automobile was considered a way more upscale, way more sophisticated option to the Model T. So a few different ways that the Dodge Brothers automobile was superior to the Model T, okay? They had an all steel body as opposed to a wooden frame with steel panels. It has a 12 volt electrical system as opposed to six. And so the four engine, or I'm sorry, the four cylinder engine that's within the Dodge Brothers cars, that was producing 35 horsepower as opposed to the Model T's 20 horsepower. And also they had a sliding geared transmission. part about the Dodge Brothers history. So, in 1916, the American government thought, we want to go after Pancho Villa. Yeah, not a great idea. I get it, but not a great idea, okay? So, General Blackjack Pershing, he is a Dodge man. He has seen just the ruggedness that Dodge is capable of, and he says, we are only going to use Dodge Brothers automobiles on this expedition, okay? They actually called it like the Mexico edition, but really, they were after Pancho Villa, okay? He pissed the wrong person off and they were after him. They used over 250 of the Dodge touring automobiles running around the Mexican border looking for Pancho Villa. At one point, now it's uh, General George Patton, yeah? So General George Patton is also a part of the, these are all recognizable names, right? He, uh, he was, I think Hitler once called Patton like that crazy cowboy general. I don't know, this story is great. So he has found out that Pancho Villa's right-hand man is over on this farm or whatever. So he takes three Dodge automobiles and they rush over there. They get into this huge, huge firefight. They manage to kill three of Pancho Villa's dudes, whatever. What they do with those three slain men from Pancho Villa's forces is throw them over the hood of their dodges, tie them there, I guess as souvenirs or trophies, and they head back to camp. And maybe Pancho Villa was taking note of how badass these Dodge Brothers automobiles were because 
Later, in 1923, he would actually be assassinated while driving his own Dodge Brothers touring automobile. All right, you know what time it is. It is beer 30. Just, oh, working so hard. Just kidding. I love this. I love talking about car history. It's kind of my cup of tea, if you haven't noticed. It's my thing. So, thank you, Rebel Toad. I'm drinking your Suicide Hop IPA, 9% ABV. <laughs> they are one of our local breweries down here in Corpus Christi, Texas. So, cheers. Thanks, Hector and Natalie. also played a very major role in World War One. okay? They supplied over 13,000 automobiles for the cops, ranging from touring cars, panel vans, and screenside trucks. beer because now we're going to talk about the sad stuff. So uh, <clears throat> 1920 rolls around and this is right around the time that the Spanish influenza is raging on the human population and unfortunately John would succumb to the Spanish influenza in 1920 and that was like January 1920 and then in December of 1920 Horace would also perish. And now I've had a kind of a hard time figuring out exactly why Horace died, okay? So here are a few ways, I, can, I don't know, there's not a confirmed thing. So some things I've read, cirrhosis of the liver, he was absolutely distraught that he lost John, which I get, you know? But also complications from Spanish flu, okay? And also possibly pneumonia. And that pneumonia could have been complications from the Spanish flu. So I'm not sure. Either way, it really sucks that you lost two. I, I always think about what if some of these just mavericks within the car industry had stayed alive, like Gene Bugatti, you know, he passed away way too young. Dino, Alfredo Dino uh, Ferrari passed away way too young. Interesting to think about. At the point that both brothers perished, now Dodge brothers passed on to their widows. Uh, they put some guy in charge. It wasn't going quite as well. Really, Dodge brothers, for being so innovative, became stagnant in their development, which I'm sure the Dodge brothers would have just turned over in their grave at that. But uh, I think it was by 1925 or 1926, they decided to sell the company. So when the Dodge Widows decided to sell Dodge Brothers Company, they did it with a bang. They sold it to investment group Dylan Reed and Company for what was at the time the largest cash transaction ever, all right? For $146 million. And then in 1928, Dodge would be sold to Chrysler, and that's where we end talking about Dodge Brothers history. And now we're going to talk about this 1921 Dodge. And when you think about it, this Dodge came out just a year after both of the brothers passing. So you can see here we have uh, the original Dodge Brothers emblem, and it's kind of interesting and it's neat. And unfortunately, though, they passed away before we could actually figure out what the precise meaning of it all was. Um, a lot of people thought that this maybe stood for uh, Jewish Star of David. However, the Dodge brothers were not Jewish. And then there are some theories that these are interlocking Greek deltas, um, two Ds basically, that would stand for the two Dodge brothers. Uh, but we just don't know, which is frustrating because I want to know. You know what I mean? Uh, now you also have, I love, I love moto meters. I just love so these will tell you the temperature you have going on in your radiator. Well, let's go ahead and check out this four-cylinder engine, shall we? Okay. 
capable of about 35 horsepower. And uh, within there also you have a three-speed manual floor-mounted transmission. The auxiliary horn in there, which everybody loves. All right, let's look at all the tiny DB touches, okay? On the wire rim wheels, we have a DB center cap. On the running board, we have two lovely Dodge Brothers DB parts. I don't think there's any visible in the interior that I missed, okay? But also, back here, you have the rear-mounted gas tank. Let's see if we can get a decent little look at that. Another cheers again. <laughs> All right, my friends. Well, I hope you had fun because obviously I did. I love this stuff. It's my jam. If, uh, if you have a favorite Dodge, please tell me. If you have a favorite Dodge history fact that I missed, which, you know, I can't fit, nor do I care to fit everything into one of these videos, write it in the comments below. Tell me what your favorite antique Dodge is. Tell me what your favorite modern Dodge is. Um, you know, tell me, maybe you saw, there's quite a few cars in the background, maybe you saw one of those, you want the next video to be about it, write that down there. Um, if you have anything negative to say, don't say it at all, alright? I grew up in a mechanic shop. I have three older siblings, two brothers, one very mean but lovely but mean sister, classic car Callie. There is nothing that a internet troll can say that hasn't already been said to me already. So. Cheers, everybody. Please stay safe. Please practice social distancing and support your local businesses as best you can during these hard times. All right. Cheers. And of course, don't forget to subscribe.